everyone. I'm Jim. And I'm Kevin. And we're the filmmakers of Mike Mignola Drawing Monsters. Available now on Kickstarter. And you're listening to Spoiler Country. So welcome back to Spoiler Country. Bloop, bloop. Wait, I think you're on this side? No, maybe you're on this side. I don't know. I don't know One of these sides. Too. One of these sides. See Johnny's awesome hat that he had done for himself. Didn't bother getting one for me. Just said, I'm going to have to. He didn't go. I didn't know I had to go for you to get spoiler country merch and not go. I it should was one per person. Man. Too. <laughs> hey, welcome back, guys. Today on the show, uh, this is actually really, really, really cool. And I know I say that a lot, but this really is because we have Kevin Hanna, Jim Dimonacos, and they are making an amazing documentary on everybody's Hellboy favorite, Mike Bignola. Oh, yeah. And this is going to be awesome. It have you is. seen this yet? Yeah. Have you looked at it? I, I've seen pieces of it. I've not watched it in its entirety yet. The, yeah. You did yeah. the interview with them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, did some wonderful editing video wise. So if you're listening on the audio, definitely go to YouTube and check out the video because it's worth watching because I've watched pieces of it. It looks great. Yeah. And thank you. One, I love Hellboy. I love Mike McNola. You know, I'm excited to see what this is all about. Uh, I mean, Dude, I the love the amount of people yeah. they have talking about McNola. Neil Gaiman's on there. Yep. Chris Robinson's on there. And it, it just goes on and on. I mean, it's an amazing cast of people that show their love of, of Mike Manola and his work and how influential he really is. Yeah. And right now it's on Kickstarter to support us. You can go back on Kickstarter. Yeah, three days. days. Three more days. Yeah. Right now. Three yep. days left, including today. Yeah. So, so it ends on Wednesday. Out right now. Yeah. 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 Check yeah. it out right now. Go there. If you want to be a part of history, it's time to do it. And, um, yeah, dude, Dimonacos and Hannah were awesome. So oh, yeah, much. They're cool guys. Yeah. There's like an hour of pre and post away <laughs> from the main interview, that stuff that we just couldn't put on there. And uh, I'll show it to you because it's hilarious. Uh, G- Jim Dimonacos is one of the funniest people that we've talked to. And and uh, it's kind of funny because you don't really see it so much on the interview because <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he, he, his, his humor is all dry. Yeah, but you'll hear us talk about cocaine, and that's all because of him. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, he's, he, I mean, just just look up Kirby Crackle, and you'll understand who he is. You don't know, if you've never heard of him before. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, look up Kirby Crackle the band. If you look up Kirby Crackle, you're going to get what Kirby Crackle really is in the comics. But Kirby Crackle the band is is yeah. Look that up. There you go. There you go. So what do you say, man? You want to get into this? Dude, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right, guys, welcome back. Today on the show, this is super exciting because two amazing guys have stopped by Spoiler Country to talk about their documentary that they have live on Kickstarter right now that you can go and pledge to be a part of. And then I think you guys are targeting around April 2022 to actually have it completed. And that is Kevin Hanna and Jim Dimonacos. Thanks, guys, for coming on. What's happening with Drawing Monsters, The Secret Origin of Hellboy? Well, <laughs> funny you should ask us about that. <laughs> you know what? Just cut that. Just you can edit this. We can, um, we, we can put the pauses, but it's more fun to make it awkward. <laughs> that is. Uh, extend that pause and just be just, like, just, hello? Well, well. well. Is that what we're talking about? My goodness. Like that. Mike Mignola, Drawing Monsters. Jim and I are just massive fans of Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy. And we we love these behind the scenes movies about musicians and chefs and astronauts. But, you know, we yeah. all know about our favorite musicians. We know about, you know, when we hear our favorite song, we can tell you who sang it, when they sang it, who, you know, what was going on in their lives. And, but not with our favorite comic book characters and how, you know, today comic book characters are like massively important. They're, you know, in movies and television and action figures and you name it. And uh, we were like, you know, what if we could tell the stories about these comic book creators? Cause you know, Jim has run Emerald City Comic Con. He ran that for I think 17 years Mm -hmm. and a chain of comic book stores and all sorts of stuff. And I did a bunch of other comic book stuff and film stuff. And we were like, what if we could just tell the stories of these creators that we love? 
And so we said, you know, let's just do it. And uh, without hesitation, we were just like, well, it's got to be about Mike Mignola because he's a personal hero for, for both of us. He's just an amazing storyteller and artist and writer, but also has uniquely built his own universe for other writers and other artists to come and play in and tell their own stories. Yeah. Yeah. He, it, it's funny when you think about comic books and the creators, it, it is, it's true. There's never been like a VH1 behind the music. And that's kind of like, I, I envision that's what you guys are kind of doing in a lot of ways for, for comic book creators. Cause, and it's, it's perfect because 3000 years from now, they won't talk about us, but Superman stories, Spider-Man stories, and I bet you Hellboy stories will still be being told. And so this is, I think it's important. You guys are putting in a kind of a, a, a footnote in the history of comic books and, and bring it to light. I think I love it. It's a great idea. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, first off, the behind the music analogy is pretty accurate because there's a lot of cocaine in all of our <laughs> stories. Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> Walt Simonson dropping. Eh, we were going to town. <laughs> and like every single creator we talked to, it was just yeah. like, "What? What was your inspiration?" And they're like, "The Coke." And so I was like, "All right, well, I mean, this makes for super interesting." Sorry, spoiler. If you back the campaign, I apologize. Like, pretty much, it's trying to hold two hours of a lot, like a lot of snorting noises. And so, oh my anyway. god. Has this line of question so, happened yet for you guys where cocaine was the general consensus? <laughs> no, this is the first. I mean, we're, we're yeah. revealing it exclusively here. The exclusive um, is just oh my everything, God. the entire, the whole, yeah, you know, Cocoa the whole legend, legend imprint completely just powered by. Right. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, you know how concrete from Paul Chadwick, like concrete, that's, that's the street name for heroin. And so <laughs> like... Let's face it. I mean, <laughs> sorry, I almost got through that with a straight face. Okay, cool. Like, I'll be honest. I almost made Kevin spit his, his uh, iced tea, and that was worth it just there. Oh my god! Uh, to be so, but honestly, though, that's exactly what we're hoping for. Is that yeah. when the way Kevin said it was perfect? Because right now, like geek culture is pop culture there's yeah. no separating the two like it yeah. used to be two separate things you know used to be into you know like magic the gathering or pokemon or all this other stuff and it was like thanks nerd whatever now like people who've never even you know cracked open a pack of pokemon cards are playing it on their cell phone right. you know and everybody's lining up like for the past you know not this last two years but if you want to think about well, what was the most popular TV show, if you had told me as a child that the most popular TV show for like over half a decade was going to be about dragons, <laughs> like I'd, I'd tell you that you're insane. You know what I mean? Like that's me getting bullied for, for reading fantasy novels in, in school and being like, no, that'll never happen. You know, and it's like, instead here we are and all our pop culture is revolving around the characters that we all grew up with. And yeah, the awesome. thing that's missing, the, the key piece that's missing for us is the spotlight on the people who got these characters to this point. Yeah. And that's really, that's really our core mission. Yeah. I, no, go ahead. I think one of the differences, no oh, thanks. I, I think one of the differences between, you know, often a lot of movies or, or television shows or other projects will be these big group projects with lots of people all contributing to create characters and sort of thing, those sorts of things. But comic books are unique in that often they're just cr the characters that we love were created by one, maybe two characters or yeah. two, pe two creators. And often after like a lot of like struggling and couch, sur couch surfing and trying to get their vision together and, you know, trying to break in and that sort of thing. And so, you know, it's just like the, th the thing that we're finding is that so much of the, their characters and their stories are them. And, you know, like Mike is absolutely <laughs> uh, no exception. Like he's very much in in very in in a lot of ways, Hellboy is a reflection of Mike. Yeah. When you guys sat down and you came up with this idea, 
was Mike always going to be the first one? Because I imagine you have a list of people that you may or may not want to do. We don't need to talk about that because that can open up a whole can of worms that ain't nobody need to be stealing ideas. So was Mike the first and, and, and like the clearly the one you want to do first? That was a weird question, but yeah. More, I, I would say more or less. I mean, yeah. when Kevin and I, so because you're local, this is perfect. Uh, yeah. We were at the Blazing Onion in Linwood, and <laughs> I've been there many times. Seriously, times. like we're at the we're at the Blazing Onion in Linwood. We're getting lunch together, yeah, and we're just chatting about all kinds of stuff. And this idea was formed there. Just the idea of like we should do, you know, like it would be great to do spotlight documentaries. And then literally, we're like, all right, well, like who would you see? Do, you know, who would you want to do first, or who would you want to see? Yeah. And without like almost like jinx, we were both like, I think Mignola would be cool, you know? Awesome. That makes and, so much and sense. And so we were, it, it does. And we were so aligned on it that it yeah. was really awesome because, I mean, you know, if, and one of the things we talked about were like, not that they don't deserve any, the attention, but we're like, we want to profile someone who is still alive. Because, and I get it, there's been a lot of, of great stuff about Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and like yeah. all the creators who have passed. Stan Lee had a ton of stuff written about him. So exactly. And yeah. we thought it was important to be able to talk to the people who did the thing that we're talking about instead yeah. of like, it's cool to talk about, like, you know, I love Jack Kirby. Don't get me wrong. Like I would, it's so easy to say the first comic that really got me into superhero comics and English was a reprint of Fantastic Four number one. And oh, so cool. like Jack Kirby holds like a big place in my heart and I can yeah. talk on and on about him, but it's hard to not be able to then go to Jack Kirby and be like, tell us your side of the story or tell right. us, you know, how did you come up with something or how did you feel about this? And it's been pretty rad to be able to go to Mignola and sit down and be like, okay, so let's like straight up, let's start with your childhood and then roll all the way through your life. And let's talk about all these interesting things yeah. and some stuff he, he not glossed over, but it was like, Oh, you know, I worked on Disney's Atlantis and I worked on this and that. And like, it's so funny to us. Cause we're like, man, I could do a whole thing just on Disney's Atlantis if you, yeah. if you know, if you wanted to, Which but instead amazing. it's like, yeah, right. Yeah. So way underrated. So there you go. So yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited to, to, to watch this because you, you have like, we had Christopher Golden on a couple of times and him and I will chat on Twitter or, you know, on instant messaging. And he's, that guy's awesome. And the work he does on Baltimore and all the other stories he's done, he must have some just, I, I would imagine that you guys get the camera going, have your A and B rolling and just let him go. And then how much time have you got with people like Chris and, and like, and like I'm excited for uh, Chris Robeson as well, because here's a guy that created his own universe with like the I zombie and all the other stuff and super influenced by Mike Mignola, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. Ro Robeson was actually the, first person that we interviewed i interviewed him at emerald city when i think honestly we were just like we should do this and we hadn't even i don't think we'd even gotten mike's permission yet we just started yeah. telling people we were like yeah we're making the mike Mignola documentary i hope he's in and Wait. i'm going to tell you the truth it's it's so we we've broken the story and we had to like we have our notes and stuff and we do have to kind of hedge in the conversations because we could easily fall down this like geeky well of asking yeah. about our favorite characters and stories and go too right. far just in, in the mythology of it and and that, and some of that's important but you don't want to go so far because you're trying to get how these stories relate you know i when we were, or when we were talking to doug jones he started talking about doing the the star trek makeup for 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 saru, Sunbury, for yeah. saru. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and we were getting into it we're like oh, this isn't actually relevant to the Mike Mignola documentary. And we're totally like, this is so cool. And we're like, oh, okay, no, we have to bring it back around. We could talk about Star Trek longer. But. Right, right. How do you, how do you yeah. curb that conversation? Because that's one of my biggest things too. Because I do, we do hundreds of interviews, you know, and we'll be talking mm -hmm. about a thing and all of a sudden a tangent will happen and, and we got an hour of something that has nothing to do with what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so we found like an air horn is perfect. Just <laughs> like... Oh. <laughs> just don't do it next to the coke <laughs> yeah um 
No, it, it's hard because, you know, I think this is like, and I'll say, I'll, I'll be, I'll be pretty real about it. It's like a blessing and a curse that we yeah. are nerds. Yeah. And that we're like, no, tell us more. Like that's, that's awesome because the nerdy part of me wants to hear more right. about Star Trek makeup and about this and that. And so the counterbalance is that we need to then say, okay, either how do we relate that to the story or straight up just, and it's not like we're ignoring it. It's like, cool, like cool story. We love it. Let's now talk about, let me like, let me re-ask the question that got us on this tangent, but instead focus it, maybe I'll, I'll reword it in another way to yeah. try to get a more succinct answer. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's not easy because I think yeah. as humans as well, we like talking like this is, this is crack to me. I keep, I don't know why all the drug references. But like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, I just want people to know that this is all Jim. <laughs> Hello, this is Jim, and I have a problem, uh, obviously. But Hi, no, it, I, I love talking, and I I love listening as well, and yeah. getting people's feedback, and then like, all right, like now now let me bounce off of what you said, and those conversations can become such spirals if we're trying to present like a Wikipedia entry of what you've done, right, right, right. And that's the thing that we have to struggle to avoid is, you know, like with Mignola, it's like, okay, let, you know, I mentioned Disney's Atlantis, like that could be its own thing. And then it yeah. could be like, tell us about redesigning Mr. Freeze for the Batman animated series. Okay, that could be its own thing. But instead what we're saying, what we would say is like, you've worked on a lot of television and movie properties are did any of them stand out to you so yeah. that gives them the opportunity to like shuffle all those stories into a cohesive like he's like you know what was memorable this and it's like okay so he's not necessarily glossing over the fact that he worked on all these other things we just need to pare it down to the point where it can be relevant to the yeah. story that we're telling yeah right about his career life right yeah it's it's always it also oh, go ahead I was going to say, it also helps that Jim and I like pinch hit doing the interviews. So he'll interview one person, I'll interview another person. And the other one of us will stand behind with like the notes, yeah. making sure that we're getting all the points. And then usually one of us will come in at the other end and be like, oh, you know, like ask about the other thing. Or can we, can he say more about this? The one thing that we wanted to talk about and that sort of thing. Yeah. So it, it, helps, it helps a lot. And, you, you know, because we travel for most of these, very few have we done in Seattle. It gives us a lot of time on the planes, on the trains for us to be like, what do we want to get out of the interview? What are we hoping that they'll talk about? You know, we, we know a lot of it. But then also we get surprised because there are some things that they've never talked about before or aren't on, re on record yeah. talking about before. So. Yeah, that's always cool. Yeah. It's, it's nice when you're able yeah. to get that, when you got to pull those kind of stories out of people because I, I love comic books. I've loved comic books since I was a little kid. I broke into my brother's room and I was, it was like 1982. I was like eight years old. And I remember reading Magic, the miniseries for the first time. My mom was super religious. So it just blew my mind. And I've been in love ever since. <clears throat> and getting to meet the creators like I've been able to doing this has been like we've had Walt Simonson on and we've had you know Jerry Conway and we've had all these big hitters on and it's been it's been awesome Mike Minola is is notoriously recluse when it comes to interviews he's done some but he doesn't do a lot you know and I'm, I'm curious what is something that you guys worked with with him that you were surprised to find out that you had no idea that, you know, something you can share, obviously, that you had no idea that you wouldn't have known without doing this. I mean, there was a lot, of, there was a lot. I, I mean, this isn't even so much from Mike, but the one I keep coming back to is how much, how many people he's interacted with and affected in their careers. And like, yeah. you know, like, his, you know, his early collaborations with Neil game and like that was kind of mind-blowing for for me I don't know as much for Jim maybe but when he was uh they were talking about they had started on Swamp Thing together on an annual very short story but it was before Sandman and and that was going to be Neil Gaiman's big 
grown up. So this is DC in the 80s. book was going to be in the eighties. Yeah. Wow. So this was 89 and uh, it, it, this was the precursor to Sandman and, the, and yeah. he was like, I'm planning the book out. I'm going to work on it with Mike and we're going to do this thing. And then the Rick Vetch pitched the story was in line to do the story about Swamp Thing becoming the cross of Christ. And DC just said, okay, we're not doing Swamp Thing anymore. And then because of that, they went off in their own different directions and we got Hellboy and we got uh, Sandman. And so like right. those kinds of things were just like, and you start to connect all these different things. It's just as both fans, but also just as excited storytellers were like, this, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all interconnected. <laughs> it's, all, it's all connected, yeah. Yeah, that's that, that I think is, so to, to echo Kevin, it's almost less what we found out from Mike because Mike, even though, like you said, like he doesn't do a ton of interviews, he's always yeah. been super open about his career. Yeah. So it's not like there's a lot of like, let's call it mystery. It's not right. like, oh, you know, I didn't know you did this. It's like everything he does is pretty public and pretty, and he, you know, he's had a couple of retrospectives in like, you know, like comic book artists and other ones that have like sat down extensively with him. Yeah. And so, for example, when we sat down with Rebecca Sugar, who was the creator of Steven Universe, right, for her to tell us that, you know, before talking to Mike Mignola, Steven didn't even have a star on his chest. And all that came from the conversation with about symbolism with Mignola. Those have been the, the interesting things, again, is like where Mignola has actually affected or influenced other creators, less so the stuff that Mignola talks about about himself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. in this weird way. I mean, yeah. a lot of it is also just like observable by by talking to Mike because Mike is very like, I mean, he approaches his job in the same way that Hellboy does, right? So Hellboy is just like a dude who goes to work. And right. so, you know, Hellboy's going at, he's, he's the beast of the apocalypse and he's fighting monsters. And he's like, okay, it's punches the clock. And he's like, I guess I need to take care of this. <laughs> and, you know, Mike cares so much about his art, but he also kind of, he talks about it the same way, which is like, yeah, I did this and I moved this and that, I think that looks better that way, I guess. And he's very kind of like, self-effacing and yeah. and then you know of course you talk to other people and and you know is like spent one afternoon with rebecca sugar talking about mythology and reshaped um certain you know a lot of steven universe and and you know th these stories get repeated over and over again and mike's just kind of like yeah you know <laughs> and, uh, and, and and i and i think that's it's one of the reasons that that i that i i love him so much is just because he's like yeah i'm just making a thing and uh, and it's like so cool and so important that's cool I mean, because a part of me feels when I think of Mike <clears throat> and I've watched some interviews with him and I see his artwork because uh, Hellboy is like one of the best things going. And it has been for a very long time. And the whole universe and the, B, the it was a BRPD and all of that kind of stuff is crazy. And I always kind of feel could, because he's created this whole universe all interconnected and, and people have gravitated towards it. It's almost, this sounds weird, but it's almost like living legend status where because of all the art and all the stories and everything he's created, you know, people kind of look at him. And so I'm always wondering when he's talking to people, <laughs> I can imagine that it's hard to go. Are you talking to me because you really love what is going? Or are you thinking, what can I do for you? You know? And, and I'm wondering, did you guys have to kind of break through that type of barrier with, with him or with the people around him. My name be him. It might be the handlers that he has that to, to do the day-to-day -day business stuff while he can concentrate on what he does best. Listen, like, like most people, he, he was really open to being paid off. Yeah. And <laughs> so once, once you get over that, like, once you get over that financial hump with yeah, all, yeah. all these people, it's, I mean, it's smooth sailing. You know? <laughs> we bought him a boat. You know? Just like, you want this yacht? And he's like, no, I want the big yacht. We got the big, big yacht. Right. Pay for that. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the, the Kickstarter has not even scratched the amount of damage that he did to the boat, to be perfectly <laughs> frank. So, but so honestly, though, yeah. I, I have a very long relationship with Mike. I've known him for, for a number of years, over a decade. He's been 
I mentioned earlier, like Kevin mentioned earlier, but I I used to run Emerald City Comic Con. That was yeah. my convention. I, I started it. I ran it for a real long time. And Did you run it with Reed Pop as well? I ran it for a couple of years, kind of. Like after I sold it to Reed Pop, I was still there doing yeah. the comic guests, but then they took over in terms of operations. So Oh, gotcha. But basically during my time at Emerald City, Mike was a guest multiple times. You know, I... I've had him do art for Emerald City before. And even we did a one shot, a little like mini BPRD Seattle comic oh, that cool. was in, in continuity. Like it literally has been collected in the trades and you couldn't tell that it wasn't part of the main story. It was just like, you're like, oh, that's an interesting side story that, you know, if you never read, it wouldn't like get you either way. But right. the nice thing is that it, it was and so we've built up like a good trust over the years of like that i'm gonna i'm gonna treat everything that he does with respect and i think that went a long way for when we finally did approach him to be like listen you know me and i'm not gonna just do like you know i'm not here to like take advantage or do we're not like out to do some kind of uh hit piece you know right let's talk about what you've done let's talk about your legacy and let's take, get all these other people to talk about your legacy as well he just did an interview that came out actually this morning and he's like it's kind of like attending your own funeral <laughs> and he's like that's weird but also kind of cool you know <laughs> and so yeah so it was great i mean yeah. I, I actually, I love Mike to death and I love Christine, his wife. They're, they're just amazing people. And like, you couldn't buy them off with a yacht. So awesome. it's great. I, I'm really excited to see this thing come out and, and sit back and watch it. And I'll probably watch it a few times, you know, this guy, one, I just love listening to combo creators because they're all so quirky in, in their own different ways. And they just come up with these amazing stories and these amazing characters and these amazing universes and and i feel like if we don't get things like what you're doing we're going to miss out on some amazing people that don't get the what's the word i'm looking for you know their stories aren't being told their stories are being told but their stories aren't being told the right way yeah and i mean you know one of the 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 things that we've talked about a lot is is you know sometimes and there's there's a handful of good comic book documentaries i don't want to knock the good ones but for the most part it's more like behind the scenes for movies or yeah. promotional stuff that, or, you know, they'll, they'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, isn't it cool that you're, that you made a cameo in a movie and isn't it, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll focus on that stuff. And, you know, and we like the movies and, and we like the toys and we, yeah. all the things that go with it, but we're like, no, we want to understand why did you come up with, with Hellboy? You know, what drove you to the place that, you know, your distinct voice and your distinct art style and, and, you know, what was, what was your journey to that point? And, and those stories are just like every bit as co- as compelling as, you know, the movies. So, you know. And, and Mike's the kind of guy that has stories out there that they're not even connected to Hellboy. Like Screw on Head. Have you watched that? Yeah. Anybody who hasn't watched oh, that? Yeah. You on YouTube oh, yeah. and watch Screw on Head. And it's just like one of the funnest things you'll watch. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we just, we just added uh, Patton Oswalt to the documentary. Oh, cool. who's, uh, voices mr groin and gung the magnificent and amazing head oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah i know you guys have a lot of people that are coming on that you um haven't announced and are you going to keep those secret all the way up until release or are you going to be releasing names as they come come about i would yeah like you know like six of one half a dozen of the other like it depends on their level of comfort in terms of publicity. So yeah. on some of them, we've been very happy and they've been very happy to just be like, I am totally part of this. And there's a few others that are like, yep, I'm happy to talk about it. I don't like want it to be a big deal. So there, yeah. I feel like by the end of it, you'll get a, a good mix of, you know, a few surprises, but most of the people will have been pretty, pretty straightforward about or uh, announced, I guess is a better way to say it. Yeah, that's cool. So I know that hopefully eventually we'll see some more of these type of things coming out after Magnolia is done and you've released it. What is something you guys have learned starting from the beginning now that you'd be like, Ooh, we should do this differently. Or we should have thought of these things before we just went ahead and did this. Stack on 10 times the amount of questions you think you. Oh, everybody.
everybody just froze on me. Are you there? Short. And we're like, cool. Okay. So Kevin, that was great. Oh, sorry. Did, can you do it one yes. more time? Because everything froze. <laughs> I was like talking and all of a sudden you guys both just froze on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no sweat. Yeah, just be ready with 10 times the amount of questions that you think you need for Neil Gaiman, just because he has so much like insight and uh, he's just ready to go. So, yeah. you know, he would, we'd ask one question and he would just answer that question, but also the next like four or five. Yeah. And then, uh, and you know, his, his, his people said, you know, he, he can really only talk for a short amount of time. And we're like, okay, cool. So let's prepare for that. But then when we were done, he clapped his hand and goes, what else do you guys want to talk about? Let's talk about comics. And we're like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. So, so it, it, we, we were prepared for more, but not, I think we probably could have even gone even <laughs> further. Yeah. 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 Well, your guys' Kickstarter ends here in a few days. You got a week to go as of this recording on March 24th. We got seven days. Really? April Fool's? Mm -hmm. And then... It, it ends on the 31st, which is Is it nice. the 31st? God dang it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it ends next Wednesday, so it's perfect. Gotcha. Okay, so March 31st. Where can people go? Can they stick with the, the Kickstarter campaign and get updates there as the year goes by? Or is there going to be a uh, website or a Facebook page or Twitter or some type of that effect that they can go to? So we have all those, you know, if you've backed, then yeah, you can get the updates through Kickstarter. If you haven't, then if you check out Mignola Doc, so Mignola DOC on Twitter and on Instagram and Mignola Documentary on Facebook, all those places will have regular-ish updates. I say that because, you know, we've already said that we're probably not filming until the fall. Like we want to yeah. get our vaccine shots. We want to make sure everyone else has, and then we're going to be able to travel. So, you know, it's probably going to be, I'll be honest, pretty quiet over the summer while we're like doing a lot of prep work and just making sure we're ready to roll. And then what we hope to do without over promising is that as we're, as we're finally then doing the interviews yeah. that we can share some behind the scenes photos and some, you know, like tiny mini clips or anything else so that people, people know that we're, you know, that we're making forward progress and getting updates for getting the, the doc done. That's awesome. Well, you guys, I'm super excited for this. And I, and, I, and I mean that, honestly, I went and backed you guys, like I told you at the beginning, because I, I read the, I read through your Kickstarter. I watched the, the advertisement or whatever you want to call that. I don't know what, the, I don't, the introduction thing. I don't know what they call that. Is that what it is? It's just like, an a, like a te teaser. Yeah. The teaser. Uh, I think that's good. The, yeah, the video like teaser. teaser, I guess. Is part yeah. Of and that, that yeah. got me, you guys did a great job on that video teaser. Cause that got me really excited because I went and, and just did it. And Thank you. man, congrats on funding and, and here's to the next year of, of a very busy life. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, for having us. Fun, yeah. Yeah.